Okay, so this next video is about resonance and the best way to start it off is to watch a couple videos of some demonstrations and real life applications of it. Okay, so for the first one, you're going to see a demo with a wine glass. So as you could see, Mr. Gibbs was uh, rubbing his finger across the lip of the wine glass and it was making a sound. Many of you have probably tried this before. This physics term is resonance. Here's another one. Here you're going to see real footage of buildings swaying during an earthquake. Watch what the buildings look like relative to their background. So look at how the building is relative to the background objects and you can see that it's swaying left and right. This is real footage from an earthquake in Tokyo in 2011. You can even see the sign on the top of the building. Oh, not anymore. It was swaying. And depending on the height of the buildings, they all resonate or vibrate um, depending on their heights. Now look at the two different height buildings relative to one another. Once again, resonance. Okay, here's another real life example. Um, this one is Tacoma Narrows Bridge. Um, this is a bridge in Tacoma, Washington that actually collapsed after it had resonated at its natural frequency. Um, so it's, it's one big engineering disaster gone wrong. So you can see, see the standing waves that are created inside uh, the bridge right now. Well, if that continues at that rate, that bridge will eventually collapse, which is what happens. And let's create a little fun out of it. So eventually it did collapse, um, resonating at its natural frequency. Here's another example. Once again, Mr. Gibbs is performing this demo for me while I record him. And we call this device the Whirly. Some of you have probably seen this before as well. So as he spins it faster and faster, you can hear the pitch increase. So it is the you heard the first one. We call that the fundamental frequency. Let's, and then as he goes faster and faster, it goes up and up in harmonics, which we're about to talk about harmonics soon. And this last one is um, a video of a boy demonstrating blowing over the top of a bottle. six bottles. So what we need to do with all of these, we need to pour water in all of 
And you can see here when the little boy filled the different bottles with different levels of liquid that the pitch changed as well. So the amount of open space that the waves have to travel in makes a difference in the frequency. We call this resonance. Here's the definition of resonance. When one object vibrates at its natural frequency and causes a second object to start vibrating. Okay, let's look at some musical instruments, for instance. So we have different types of musical instruments. Some are open tube instruments, which they are open at both ends. For example, a flute. So just like the little boy did with the um, bottle, except the bottom in this case is open. So here we are blowing over the top of the flute. So we have one open end and we have another open end down here. So we call this an open tube. There's also a closed tube where it's open on one end and closed on the other. Some examples would be a clarinet and a trumpet. The difference between these two and the flute is that you actually fully cover the lip in both of them and you only have one side open which creates a closed tube. Let's first talk about an open tube. So there are different harmonics that, occur, that can occur in an open tube. Um, so the first harmonic we can see is half a wavelength. And you can see here that it is open on both sides. So there is an antinode right here on the standing wave and, an, and another antinode at the other end of the open end. So in the center, there is one node. So for the first harmonic, we have two antinodes and one node. The length of the whole tube is gonna equal one half the wavelength and there is one half of a wave right here. Okay, so for the second harmonic, we can see that there's one full wavelength inside this open tube. Once again, an antinode at one end and an antinode at the other, except this time there's an, a third antinode in here and there are two nodes. So let's annotate this as we go. Okay, so here we had two antinodes and one node. Here was our node there's an antinode, and the dotted line just represents the reflected wave at a different moment. And then again on the first, on one full wavelength, we have an antinode here, antinode here, here, and there are two nodes. So there are three antinodes and two nodes. And I'm sure you could probably see the pattern by now that the next, um, the next harmonic is probably going to have four antinodes and three nodes. And then the following will have five antinodes and four nodes. Okay, so then the third harmonic, we can see here that there is one and a half waves, so L is equal to three halves lambda. And then for the fourth harmonic, there are two full waves. So L is equal to four halves lambda, which is really two lambda. So we can see that there's this pattern that as we increase in each harmonic, we're increasing in a half of a wavelength. So our general rule, we can say, is L is equal to N over two lambda, and N is the number of harmonic we're on. So if we were on the first harmonic, we would plug in a number one here for n, which we would get l equals one half lambda. If we were on the second harmonic, we would plug in a two here for n, and it would be two halves lambda, which is really just lambda, so on and so forth. So let's go ahead and try an example problem of an open tube. So let's say we were to build a pipe organ with open tube pipes spanning the range of human hearing from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz what would be the range of lengths of the pipes required? So just some background knowledge of what is a pipe organ. Often you see these in churches, they look like this. There is a range in lengths of pipes to produce the different sounds and pitches that you hear. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this problem. Okay, so we have an open 
tube. So open at both ends, meaning our standing wave looks something like this. And our relationship for the first harmonic or fundamental frequency, we have L is equal to one half lambda. We are curious of the lengths. L is our question. Okay, so we know that we are talking about the human hearing range. So frequency range is going to be 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. That's what kilo is, thousand. It's 20,000 hertz. And we know that we're talking about um, sound. So we know the speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. So if we are using our wave speed equation, V equals F times lambda, um, we can go ahead and solve for lambda here and plug it in here so that way we have an equation that has L in it. So if we rearrange this equation, we get lambda equals two times L. So now let's plug that into this wave speed equation. So V equals F times 2L, and let's solve for L. So L is equal to, let's see, let's divide by 2F on both sides, V divided by 2F. So this is the equation we're going to use, and we're going to use it twice, once with a frequency of 20 hertz, and once with a frequency of 20,000 hertz. So we have a length of, let's go 343 divided by 2 times 20 hertz, we should get a length of 8.57 meters. So the longest tube that we need to have is 8.57 meters. And let's find the shortest tube that's going to be necessary to have the highest frequency. So 343 divided by 2 times 20,000. Plug that in a calculator and you should get 8.57 times 10 to the negative 3 meters, which to put this into perspective, that's 8.57 millimeters. Okay, so less than a centimeter long tube. So that's our range and lengths. Okay, so let's move on to a closed tube. So for a closed tube, our first harmonic, we can see here that we have an antinode um, at the open end, just like we did in the, op the open tube scenario, but there's a node at the closed end. And we know this is a node because we can see that the reflected wave um, is bouncing back. So it has to be a node at this end. So we can see there's one quarter of a wave. So the length is equal to one fourth lambda. For the third harmonic, um, we can see that we have uh, one and no, we have three quarters of a wave, so L is equal to three fourths lambda. And then we have the fifth harmonic. So the closed tubes only exist in odd harmonics. There is no even harmonics for closed tubes. So we can see we have five fourths lambda. So we have one full wave here, and then we have an extra quarter. So four fourths plus a fourth is five fourths. And then the seventh harmonic, we can see there's seven quarters of a wave. So we have one full wave, so four fourths plus an extra two-fourths, and then here's the third-fourth. So L equals seven-fourths lambda. And it continues in this pattern. So we can create a rule for closed tube cases. And our rule is L equals N over four lambda, and N must be odd. All right, well, let's try this out. So let's say that we want to find the resonant frequency that we would expect from blowing across the top of an empty soda bottle that is 18 centimeters deep. All right, let's do this. Okay, so if we have a closed tube scenario, our tube looks something like this. All right, we have our node at the end that is closed, and then there's our wave, and our relationship between L and lambda is L equals one-fourth lambda. So we know that the length of the tube is 18 centimeters. So L equals 18 centimeters. 
So from this information, we could determine our lambda. So let's go ahead and do that. Lambda must equal four times L if we rearrange this equation here. So we get four times 0 0.18 meters and we get a wavelength of 0 0.72 meters. And we are looking for the frequency. So assuming we are talking about the speed of sound in air, which is 343 meters per second, we can solve for F. So F is equal to V over wavelength. And our V is our velocity or speed of sound in air. So 343 meters per second over our wavelength of 0 0.72 meters, and we get a frequency of 476 hertz. Okay, so part B asks, how would that change if it was, if it was one third full of soda? So if we look at this, our picture kind of changes a little bit. So instead of being totally open, now it's one third full of soda. So this is no longer space that's open. So our standing wave has to occur in this region. So if we're talking about two thirds of the way, we need to know what length this is. Well, we could find what two thirds is of 18 centimeters. So to do that, let's just multiply two thirds times 0 0.18 meters, and we get a distance of 0 0.12 meters. So now that's the length that we're actually dealing with. So we have a new wavelength. Our wavelength is four times L again, because we're talking about the first harmonic. So four times 0 0.12 meters gives us a length of 0 0.48 meters. So if we go ahead and find this, uh, this frequency, we'll just call it F2 so they're different, V over lambda, we get 343 divided by 0 0.48 meters, here's meters per second, and we get a frequency of 714 hertz. So we can see that if we um, decrease our length of our tube, um, this actually decreases our wavelength, and as a result, and that is supposed to be a lambda, sorry, as a result, this uh, increases our frequency. And this is what we expect because we know that frequency and wavelength are inversely proportional to one another. Okay, so let's do our third example. This is, once again, another closed tube example. And we know this because it says a tube of air open only at one end is vibrating in the fifth harmonic. Well, let's draw this scenario first to get us started. Okay, so if we're talking about the fifth harmonic, um, well, let's draw the first and the third, then the fifth. So here's our first harmonic, and our relationship is length of tube is one-fourth lambda. Our third harmonic, okay, now we had here, we had one node and one antinode. Now we're going to increase it, so we're going to add an additional node. So we have one node here. Obviously my wave is not to scale, but that's okay. We can see that we have a half and an extra quarter, which is three quarters lambda. So there's two nodes and two antinodes. And then our fifth harmonic, we're going to add an extra node on top of that. So we have one, two, three nodes, and we should have three antinodes. So in this case, we can see that there's one full wave and an extra quarter. So we have four fourths plus an extra quarter is five fourths lambda. All right, so we know we're talking about the fifth harmonic and the from a tuning fork of frequency is 120 hertz. So we know F is equal to 120 hertz. But there's quite a few unknowns in this. We don't know the length of the tube and we don't know the speed of sound. We could say the speed of sound is 343 or we could just say it's unknown. It doesn't really matter. 
Either way, it's going to drop out. So we're wondering what frequency tuning fork would be needed at the open end um, to, pr to find the fundamental frequency, to vibrate at the fundamental frequency. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, do this problem. So we are using this relationship first. We know that the length is equal to 5 fourths lambda. So if we start with our wave speed equation, V equals F times wavelength, we can go ahead and solve for wavelength using this equation. Um, let's do that up here and then plug it in. So L equals 5 fourths times wavelength. We rearrange this equation. We get wavelength equals 4 fifths L. Now we can plug that in here. We get V equals F times 4 fifths L. Okay. And we can plug in our frequency, which is 120. So V equals 120. That's supposed to be a 2 times 4 fifths L. So this number right here is supposed to be 120. Sorry. Okay. Um, but we're curious about the fundamental frequency. So we need to get another relationship going over here that deals with the first harmonic, which is the fundamental. So first harmonic we know the relationship between L and lambda is L equals one fourth lambda. So if we set up a similar um, wave speed equation, we get V equals F times lambda. But in this case, we're looking for F. So let's get F by itself. F equals F equals V over wavelength. And if we rearrange our wavelength equation up here, we get lambda or wavelength equals 4 times L. Okay, well, let's plug that in down here. We get V over 4 times L. Since we are looking for this F, oops, this F, this is our equation we want to use right here. So let's substitute this velocity in over here for this velocity since we're talking about the same sound on the same speed. Okay, so this equation actually becomes F equals, so I'll just rewrite it again, V over 4L, and in place of V, we're going to plug in this V, which is 120 times 4 fifths L all over 4L. Well, if we simplify this equation, we can see that our lengths L drop out. We create a 1. And 4 divided by 4 drops out, creating another 1. So we do have an extra factor of a 5 in the denominator. So this is really 120 divided by 5, which gives us a frequency of 24 hertz as our final answer. Now, could you have solved this another way? Sure. And how you would have done that... Um, is you could have just said that your velocity was a certain amount. So let's just say your velocity was 343, the accepted speed of sound and air. And if instead you plug that V in right here and um, solve for L, since L's the same because it's the same tube, you could have used that L again and plugged it in right here and 343 again for V and gotten the same frequency of 24 hertz. I just wanted to show you a different approach to doing the problem. Okay, so that's all.